Well, good morning. Good morning. I remember when I met Eva and I convinced her that she needed to marry me, I shared with her that if you marry me, you'll never be bored. <laughs> this is true. And, and I, I've, I'm prophetic in that, okay? And it's been a journey. It all started here at Foxworthy Baptist Church in 1976 under the leadership of Dr. Thurman George, um, who he, I was baptized by him. Funny story, too. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, we, were, we were members of another church in Cupertino, and uh, we wanted to join this church. And uh, Joe Caldwell, who was Minister of Outreach at the time, and Ed Adams was here, and Sheldon Russell, and, uh, and uh, Ron Pratt was here as well. Uh, Joe shared with me, when I, because he was my uh, neighbor uh, here in, in San Jose. That's how we became familiar with Foxworthy. He said, Gil, how, have you thought about, because we started coming here, have you thought about joining uh, Foxworthy? And I said, well, yeah, but I'd have to be baptized again because it was from a different de denomination. I, and he says, well, do you like the fellowship? I love the fellowship. Then just do it again. Yeah. And I says, all right, but I'm doing it under protest. <laughs> okay, so, so I, I, I was baptized, you know, and it was like, it was like saying my first baptism didn't count, you know. And, uh, but you know, the funny thing about it, when Dr. George had introduced me, he would say, this is Gil Del Rosa. I baptized this young man. It was like a knife going to my back again, you know. <laughs> but just, uh, you know, it started right here at Foxworthy. And you sent Eva and I out. We went, I was a graduate from uh, San Jose Bible College. Now it's called William Jessup University in Roseville. And, I'm a, and then uh, Dr. George would take me to Golden Gate. And he says, Gil, one day you might come here. And sure enough, I, I started. You know, But before that, I didn't want to go to the ministry. And Joe th said, Gil, have you thought about going into the ministry? And I, and I had a desire. But, he says, but the schooling, and he says, I'd, I'd be 27, Joe, by the time I got out of school. And he says, Gil, you're going to be 27 anyway. <laughs> then Adams was there at my graduation in 1981 and, and, uh, at San Jose Bible College. And, and Ad says, well, Gil, now you, you need to get your union card now. And I said, what are you talking about, union, Christian? I don't get that. And he says, you need to go to Golden Gate because it's going to open up more opportunities. I told, I told him I, I'd be, you know, uh, I'm going to be 31 by the time I'm out. And, he's, he, and Ed would say, you're going to be 31 anyway. I said, okay. So we went to first church, was First Baptist Church, um, Sonoma. We were there for nine years. And uh, then we went from there to the uh, Pismo Beach area for 14 years at Central Coast Baptist Church. And then from there we went to Almonte. Familiar? Dr. George pastored that church in Almonte. It was called New Hope Community Church. The one thing I saw that was, uh, they all had in common was that as a pastor, they were laymen. And it wasn't me having to do the work. It was me equipping the lay people to do the work. Now, I just retired June the 4th of this year uh, for health reasons. And uh, so I'm on this new journey now. But guess what? I'm not retired because, by definition, the word retire means dead. All right? Well, I'm not dead, okay? And so uh, I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. So I'm still doing conferences. I'm uh, preaching, sharing, sharing my testimony. I had a, an opportunity yesterday, Don, to, to lead my mother-in-law, Barbara, to the Lord. She's 83 years old, okay? And so, you know... Yeah, Eva's excited, you know, we're going to have Barbara in heaven for all eternity. It's very cool. It doesn't get any better than that, okay? So what I'm trying to share with you, you know, you're never, you never retire. Even though I stopped on June 4th, I, you know, the Lord's open up more opportunities for me, and I'm going to walk through that. And I don't want to compromise. I don't want to compromise about, about my faith. I want to make sure that I'm still sharing the gospel. I've got so many stories I can share with you. I took up golf. And uh, the funny thing about golf is you meet all kinds of people. And I started golfing just for outreach purposes, just to be able to meet people. And I met this one guy. His name was Tiny, a big Mexican guy with a bunch of tattoos, okay? And, uh, he, and he would use what my wife would say, colorful language, as he was golfing. Every hole, he is using words, okay? 
and I'm trying to get to know Tiny, and uh, and uh, I get I'm asking him questions about his wife, his job, his kids, and he cannot talk without using colorful language. Okay, and then at the, about the second hole, he, you know, I, I smelled something from my teenage years. Okay, I, what is that? Uh, I know that smell, and he lit up a some marijuana, a weed, and he he said, Oh, Gil. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't offer you any. Any, He offered me a joint. Uh, so I, I took a puff, but I didn't inhale. No, I'm kidding. No, no, I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding with you, okay? Uh, I, I, See, I, never boring. Yeah, never boring. yeah. So at the ninth, ninth hole, he has not asked me the million-dollar question, what do I do for a living? Yeah. And I know it's coming. I've been asking question after question about his wife, his kids, his job, everything. And at ninth hole, I, I kid you not, I take a practice swing <laughs> and, and I'm ready to hit it. He says, hey, Gil, you've been asking everything about my blankety blank wife, my kids, and my work, and you haven't told me what you do for a living. And I said, I pastor a church. And I <laughs> hit the ball, <laughs> landed a foot away from the pen. He looks at me and he says, you what? He says, I pastor a church. He says, I've been offering you weed, and I've been cussing, <laughs> and you didn't say a word to me about anything. And I said, well, Tiny, I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to be your friend. Amen. And he looked at me, and he took his swing, and he landed a little close to the pin. We, we put it out. We start walking to the 10th hole. He looks at me. He grabs his bag, and he says, I can't handle this. And he leaves me. <laughs> he left me on the town hall by myself. He says, I can't handle this. And he left. And I said, wow, I made an impression. <laughs> <laughs> About eight months later, eight months later, he, um, I, my, my sound system broke down, Don. And, and I had to call somebody to fix it. So I called this, this group that had installed it. And uh, he says, well, call my friend. He can help you. And I said, what's his name? Tiny. Wow. And I go, he wouldn't be a big Mexican with a bunch of tattoos and with colorful language. I said, yeah, that's him. I said, what are the odds? This is in Los Angeles, folks. Wow. Millions and millions of people. So I call the guy up and I say, hi, is this Tiny? And he goes, uh, yeah, who's this? This is Pastor Gill. I know you. <laughs> he says, I've been sharing with all my golf buddies about what happened when we were golfing. You know what? He didn't accept the Lord, but that's okay because our job as pastors, as laymen, is to share the gospel, live the Christian life, and leave the results to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right, Eva, why don't you share? It's very surreal to be here, <laughs> Foxworthy, because like Gil said, a lot of our Christian life and service began here. We were already Christians when we came, and we went to a really good church in, in Cupertino. We were, we were baby Christians. We don't, I'd only been a Christian three years. And, um, and we did come here because we met Joe and Peggy Caldwell, our neighbors, and some other people that wanted to have a surprise housewarming for them and asked if they could hide in our apartment until Joe and Peggy came back. We didn't know these strange people from Foxworthy, but, you know, we let them in. And, um, and then we got invited to a picnic. I think it was like a either a 4th of July or Memorial Day or something at Vasona Park. And so we went to this picnic and we saw all these young families like us. And we were traveling 45 minutes every Sunday to go to our church that we loved. And I had been a part of in their singles group, their college group, their singles group. But we had a child now. We were you know, married, had a child. It was hard to get to that church 45 minutes away. And so one Sunday we were going to be late, and because we had been invited, and we knew some people, and we, we came here, because it was close, because we were just living off of Camden somewhere, and um, we never left, because the fellowship was sweet, we, there was lots of people just like us, and it was here that God used people just like you, and some of you might be out there, I can't see really well, um, uh, from those days, poured your lives into us as a young married couple. 
and Cleta took care of our kids. And then particularly our son Josh, because he was born, he had a lot of health problems. He was never expected to live. And the few times once he was born that we were able, I was able to come to church with him, Cleta would take care of him. A really special lady in our life. And we have so many memories because it was here that just as Pastor Don was sharing about the role of the pastor and deacons to build up the body, the pastors here at that time, they invested in us. We, I sometimes felt like I was the only person because they really invested in peers in my Sunday school class and Carl um, Chose, and I can't remember his wife's name right at the moment, but um, they, they invested in us. And I didn't come from a Christian home. Um, so yesterday my mother accepting the Lord has been the prayer since the day I accepted Christ because it was a pretty messed up family I grew up in. And, um, and a hard family. And, um, but anyway, they invested in us and taught us and equipped us for the works of the body. Amen. Helped us to see that we had uh, gifts and talents and abilities, but they were not to be used for ourselves for glory. So when we left here, a scared young couple, because the people we respected and admired, the pastors told us it was now time for us to go to seminary finish the preparation for what God had for us to do. I was scared to death. I really felt I was a detriment for Gil. Because of the family and background I came from, I figured no church would ever take us if they knew me. But it took people like you guys in this church and in other churches to just pour into us and help us to grow and learn. And um, But I'll tell you, when I was here, when we were here, Sheldon Russell was the worship leader. And we used to sing beautiful songs like today. But there were certain songs in the hymnal that just touched my spirit in such a way. I cannot sing. You would never want me to sing. When the first church, that second church that we were called to, they asked me what I was going to do as the pastor's wife. You know, was I going to play the piano like Diane does or help or sing in the choir? And I said, not if you peop want people to come back. <laughs> but you know I take really literally the scripture that says make a joyful noise unto the Lord because anybody sitting around me it's a noise but to God it's music because it's coming from my heart but there were hymns and I, I looked them up in the hymnal a little bit ago to see where they were from don't look it up now but from 557 to 597 in the Baptist hymnal that's here are, are all these different hymns that every time we sang them Something was happening inside me. And those hymns are in the section that are called Evangelism and Missions. And I just had, God had been pouring into me that he was calling me to serve. Now today, what do I do? I serve you. And every one of our other 2,300 plus churches in the area of Evangelism and Missions. I have a new team um, that I'm in now. It's called the Evangelism and Missions Team. I'm really excited because I felt they belonged together anyway. And so, but I serve, in, I serve in missions. And part of that started here. The church we were at was a great mission church. That was what my heart was. And when I came here, but I didn't know that. I didn't know that this was how God was calling and gifting me. You know, one of the people I met was um, Ellen Cosby. And one time I went to one of her women's meetings. And really, honestly, the only, I didn't know what it was about, but the only reason I went was because there was free childcare and lunch. <laughs> and I had preschoolers, and my husband was working full time and going to school, Bible college, and I needed to be with some adults. Yeah. Some women that would talk, and I wasn't, you know. <laughs> and so that's why I initially went, but my heart right there was caught with missions. And, and WMU and all that that entailed. And so for, for years I served in WMU um, as vice president for our state, WMU as president for five years. I worked under that leader for a number of years and then God opened a door and called me to serve in that area for our state and women's ministry and children's missions. And I served on the women in evangelism team uh, when we had an evangelism department because that's how God called me, but it wasn't for me, it was for the body to serve. 
and to share. And so one song, in, two songs in particular, People Need the Lord. I just couldn't sing that without crying. And I couldn't sing, Here Am I, Send Me. And even today when I hear that song, at anything I'm at, my heart is stirred because I feel so privileged that someone took the time to share Jesus with me, a number of someone's, one being this wonderful man, who later convinced me to marry him so I wouldn't be bored. <laughs> and he really, has, it's not been boring. But, you know, but I, I know that the things that I'm passionate about, God didn't put those in me for me or for me to feel good about me. He put those in me for me to use for his kingdom purpose. And I find the most joy when I'm doing that. My mother just had a heart attack on Thursday, and I was in Sacramento for a women's ministry, You Lead Leadership. I was going to be speaking and training. There were 440 women there. And there was a part of me that was caught in, do I go to Reno right now? But by the time I get there, will she still be there? Or do I stay here where God purposely put me to serve these women that came? And I prayed and I talked to my husband and I felt very strongly that I needed to stay there and do what God had called me for because he called me to that purpose. And so I asked the, the team, the um, whatever they were called, the planning team, if they would pray for me that I would have calmness and clarity and complete the task that God brought me there for and that God would provide for my mother, for her care. And I had a sister that eventually got there. Um, and there was a struggle about that. But I knew in my heart that was what to do. And um, a scripture that comes to mind and is in Colossians that have been some of my key verses is Colossians 3.17. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And then verses 23 and 24, whatever you do, again, do your work heartily as not for the Lord rather, for the Lord rather than for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of your inheritance. It is the Lord Jesus Christ whom you serve. You know, and every session that I taught, I shared with them because I never have my cell phone on but I felt I needed to have it on in case I got a call that I needed. So I shared, I have this on, and excuse me if it rings, it'll be low, but, and I take off out the door. So who here will come up here and read my notes? You won't be able to share what I was gonna share necessarily, but who will read my notes so that you that are here and paid to come to this will not go home without what you came for? And in each session, a younger woman, which is my passion, to raise up younger women to take my place and others my age's place. I feel we've done a very poor job of that, my generation. We've done a very poor job of mentoring the next generation to take our place. And so, and each one, a young woman raised her hand, or somebody said, she'll be great. <laughs> and, um, and so, in each session, I got called out. And that woman came up, whichever one it was, took my notes, and when I walked back in, they were reading it and putting in their own commentary which fit perfectly and so I believe that God honored my obedience and my service and my willing to equip other people because I got those young women's names and if they're members of Southern Baptist Church they know I'm contacting them because I'm going to start <laughs> equipping them to do ministry but I believe God honored that Amen. yesterday through my mother accepting Jesus Christ after years and she would have been very mad had she found out, even though she wasn't a believer, she knows my passion, she knows my heart, she's observed me for many years, that if, I, if she felt she was the cause of me leaving something I was doing to serve my God, it would have really upset her. So I really believe that because I chose to obey God, serve him where he called and put me, you know, had many people because I told them and people were, were praying all over the place for my mother, um, that he honored that with yesterday, after all these years, her accepting Jesus Christ. So 
thank you for letting me come today. It's been a blessing. Our, our son was married in this church. You know, that was a great day. Um, but to be able to be here at our home church where we were sent out to serve. Amen. Amen.